All right, Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give our praises, glory, and honors unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Kakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of the Great Millstone. Shalom to the hopeful elect. This is the priest of Zion One, GMS Atlanta, back again with uh, another edition of GMS News and Prophecy. And I have some more news, some more prophetic news for the uh, hopeful elect out there. Uh, I have an article here from uh, Forbes.com. All right. And uh, it says, Moon eats Venus create solstice ring of fire eclipse what you can see in the night sky this week all right so this is uh in, in, you know another you know once again you know another um a, a omen of these different signs in the heavens okay um you know through the spirit i've been able to uh uh provide you know the believers in your how about you shy uh, out there for the past couple of weeks, you know, and update them on the things that's going on um, in the heavens as opposed to, you know, what we, you know, what we know that's going on in the earth right now. And this is heavy, you know, this is heavy. You know, a lot of things that happen in the spirit, you know, uh, the brothers that are in the know uh, understand as well as, you know, some sisters. And, you know, it's, 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 it's a very, very, beautiful time that we're in because this is the time that um Yahweh has has told us since the beginning through his prophets that we were to look forward to because what's getting ready to happen is our kingdom all right the kingdom of Israel through the spirit and power of Yahweh is getting is is getting ready to appear on earth all right and we know because of these prophecies so uh, this is dated from uh, June 14th, 2020, the year of prophecy. Once again, it says moon eats Venus, create solstice ring of fire eclipse. What you can see in the night sky this week. So this is this week. OK, this week. Today's date is um, June 15th, 2020. So this was yesterday's article. And uh, let's see here. You know, I, I want to get right into it. So it says, what to watch for in the night sky this week, June 15th through the 21st, 2020. It says, June's short nights make it a tricky yet rewarding month for stargazing in the northern hemisphere, none more so than this week. You know, and I've, I've also, I just want to, you know, add this too. I've noticed within like the last two days, uh, the sun has been going down. Um, well, I'm in Atlanta. So uh, I noticed that the, uh, the sun has been going down uh, here around maybe eight thirty nine o'clock as opposed to uh, more like seven thirty eight. you know, like an hour later. So um, and even when, it, you know, around nine o'clock, you know, you can still see some light, you know. So it's definitely a, a, um, it's been a lot longer days, you know. So uh, let's see here. It says, uh, it says June short, June short nights make it a tricky yet rewarding month for stargazing in the northern hemisphere, none more so than this week, which ends with the solstice, the longest day and shortest night of the year. It also ends with a new moon that causes a special kind of solar eclipse, at least for some sky watchers. Yeah. Hey, well, for the elected Israel that's watching the skies and watching the news, we know and not only is that a high holy day for the Israelites, you know, which is beautiful, but the eclipse is also a, a, a sign of prophecy. You know, our Savior is getting ready to come back, you know, so you can understand. I, the Savior of the so-called black Spanish and Native Americans, although you have a lot of trouble that's going on with our people, the, ho the, hopeful, uh, the hopeful elect of us, um, the hopeful elect of us, uh, uh, really, you know, we, we really, sh you know, should be um, rejoicing. OK. So it says, however, for most of the uh, uh, of us, the highlight would be watching the moon move through a busy field of planets in the late night skies. Incidentally, if you're in a dark sky site and able to get out and about around midnight, this is a great week to see the Milky Way. So you how about you with shot? He's opening up signs for us, man. He's letting us know that he's with us. OK. He's with us, man. You can, we're soon going to see a lot of blessings uh, come 
to the elect, man. Right? And those of us that have been, uh, you know, staying true to our power, the Heavenly Father, He's going to bless us because we, we're also seeing the trouble. You know, we're seeing the, the police shootings. Like last week, they shot uh, another uh, so-called black man here in Atlanta. You know, and that's all over the news right now. Of course, with the thing, you know, the things that, that have been happening in, you know, uh, uh, Minnesota, Texas, you know, police brutality, the protests, the riots, you know, the, uh, 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 the C-19, you know, a lot of things are affecting our people right now. So where is the good? You know, where's that silver lining, so to speak? That silver lining is within these prophecies, within these signs. OK, uh, matter of fact, let me get a scripture. Um, I got another one lined up, but I want to get this first and then I'm going to get the main scripture that I want to get. Um, so I'll, I want to get this up. Uh, let's see here. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, yeah, they're rejoicing, right? Uh, let's see here. Rejoicing, God, because let's see here. Uh, and these are a lot of, you know, beautiful scriptures that I'm scrolling through. But I want to get a particular point. Let's see if, if I can find it. All right, here we go. Right. Luke 19, Luke 19 and 37. It says, and when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise the Most High. And they were speaking about Yahweh Shai, the power he had. All right, it says, with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. Okay, and we're seeing mighty works from Yahweh Shai right now, whether it be the, the you know, the um, trouble, you know, Jacob's trouble that we're going through right now into, you know, the, the, uh, the prophecies coming to pass, that's all the mighty works of the Most High. But those of us that are in the truth, that understand what's going on, you know, those of us that know we're Israelites, you know, we should really be rejoicing, okay? Because these are the things that we see and that we know that, that the Lord, He spoke of these things, okay? And we know that He's going to save us, all right? So I'm going to read that again. It says that when he was come nigh, and this is speaking about Yahweh Shai, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise the Most High with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had, that they had seen. And Yahweh Shai did many mighty works, from turning water into wine to his transfiguration. You know, um, he did many works, you know, feeding the 5,000 and 3,000. To uh, healing the blind, Yahweh Shah did many mighty works among the disciples and and the Israelites back then. Period. So the Heavenly Father is is you know through His Word, through His prophecies, is showing us mighty works. So us um, brothers and sisters that that um, take heed to the apostles and the elders of GMS, you know through through them, we believe in Yahweh Yahweh Shah, and we're seeing the mighty works of the Lord. You know, so I just wanted to bring that point out. I'm going to read verse 38. It says, saying, blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Who's that king? Yahweh Shai. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And that's what's coming. Okay, that's what's coming. All right. <clears throat> okay, peace in heaven and, and glory is coming. Okay. Um, like I said, I want to get that next scripture. And this is just a basic, you know, scripture pertaining to the article. You know, we all know this. This is uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. 
It says, And the power said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to, the, to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So for us to see the different stars, you know, the moon and the sun having these different eclipses and the constellations and things that are, that are um, manifesting in the night sky, in, in, in space, in the heavens, we know that these are signs that Yahweh Shai is doing his mighty works. So this is really, you know, a, a, a faith booster. OK, so I want to go back to the article. And I just want to go through some of these things that are happening this week. So it says Monday, June 15th, 2020 moon at epigee. It says today the moon is at epigee, the furthest point it gets from Earth during its monthly orbit. At 404,597 kilometers. It says, but it says, it says that's not important per se for sky watchers. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it does come into play later this week by causing a very specific kind of solar eclipse. So let's go through Tuesday. Tuesday, June 16, 2020. Venus, the Pleiades and Aldebaran. And I'm bringing out a scripture on the uh, Pleiades. It says, for so long, a part of the evening sky in 2020, Venus is now a stunning and fascinating sight in the pre-dawn sky. And I did, a, uh, um, th there was a lineup, I believe, of Mercury, the moon, and Venus about two weeks ago. I did a video on that because that's another sign of prophecy. It says, as an inner planet, from our point of view, it often appears as a crescent to us on Earth. Now, the crossing the sun a few weeks ago, right? I just mentioned that it's been rapidly waxing in brightness. And that's the angels. That's why the, the, the NASA's constantly seeing chariots move around the earth and the moon and the sun, because, you know, and just in, 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 you know, out there in a space period, because that's the prophecies of Yahweh Shai. That's his, um, it says that the um, stars and the moon and the sun are the instrument. It means the moon being an instrument of the armies above. Who's who represents the army of of the heavenly Father above? The angels, all right. The so-called UFOs, the chariots, okay. And it talks about in a uh, uh, Sirach or Ecclesiastes, the forty-third chapter, about how the waning and the waxing of the moon are the instrument of the angels, okay. Um, Increasing in its perfection, you know. So it says it's now five percent illuminated and bound to be a beautiful sight in binoculars or a small telescope. Uh, this morning it rises just before the sun in the northeast, in the constellation of Taurus, specifically right between the Pleiades star cluster above it and red supergiant star Aldebaran below it. It says a very minor meteor shower, the June Lyrids, peaks tonight. Expect about three shooting stars per hour, you know, and and some of those are, uh, you know, you know, gonna be meteors, but uh, for the most part, you know, shooting stars, from my understanding, are are really chariots. So there's going to be a lot of chariot activity this week, you know. Hey, look at this, and in, in the caption uh, for this image, it says Venus embraces the Pleiades and four hundred and four light years. Apart, they meet every eight years. Four, four, four is spiritual. Now we know four, four, four to mean mercy. Okay, all right. Four, four, four. You know is um mercy, I believe, and eight is a very spiritual number. Okay, um. So things are happening, man. You know things are happening in the spirit. Kala Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai Bashim Rakhudash. You know, uh, uh, you know, things things are happening good for us, man. You, you know, good. You know, we you know, we've seen the trouble. We heard our people, our people are emotional right now. But for the elect out there that, you know, you know, for the comfort, you know, things are happening and don't sleep on the Lord. You know, that's one thing you don't do, man. You don't sleep on the Lord. OK. Hey, and just like they say in the Christian church, what they say, God is good all the time. Hey, how about you? I shy. It's good all the time. Whether he do good, you know, a sanction good or evil, it's all according to his will. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, so I mentioned I mentioned uh Pleiades. Let's see if I can get it right. I believe that's in the scriptures. I just want to bring that point out. Let's see here. Yep. Uh so this is uh Job the ninth chapter, you see. Uh Job nine and nine, which make it uh Arcturus, Orion and Pleiades and the chambers of the south. Job 38 and 31, can, canest thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? Okay, and um, this is just, you know, speaking about uh, the power of the Heavenly Father and how he has these different so-called constellations and stars. It's all his instrument. Okay, Job 38 and 31, canest thou bind the sweet influence of Pleiades or loose the bands of, of Orion? Now, a lot of people, you know, going to the zodiac and you know things like that and we don't have the full understanding of that right now okay but um you know for the most part the zodiac is under the uh wicked vibration of satan and esau right now so you know we don't get too much into that but the lord does you know he has put there you know those those things out there in the heavens you know for his you know his own bidding uh, I'm going to read verse 32. It says, Canest thou bring forth Maseroth in his season? Or canest thou guide Octorus with his sons? Verse 33. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Canest thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? So it's the heavenly father that he he sets up the orders in heaven to do what they do. While the moon get, you know, while, while the moon and sun get eclipses. While the, the, you know, the stars and certain things happen out there in the heavens and space. That's all under the power of Yahweh Bashmi was shot. And this is what we're seeing. Okay? So going back, um, all of these things. Hey, hey, look, man, this is beautiful. Okay? Thursday, June 18th, 2020. Moon joins Venus and Pleiades. It says, if you're up early again, have another look for Venus, now 7% illuminated. It will be joined by a beautiful 8% illuminated crescent moon waning towards its new moon phase. The moon will form a triangle with Venus and the Pleiades star cluster. All right. Friday, June 19, 2020. Uh, uh, 2020, a, a occultation of Venus. All right. Hey, so expect. So, you know, best believe that Esau on the left hand side, he's going to do. A, he, he's going to be doing a lot of rituals this week. A lot of things are happening. You know, for all we know, you know, there could be another Israelite killed by some cops or something. Um, I mean, who knows? You know, we are coming to the time of Jacob's trouble. So, you know, Esau is going to come down on the, you know, in the earth upon the people with great wrath, knowing he has a, a, a short time. So there's going to be a lot of things that uh, that happen in the earth, um, you know. Through, through, you know, you know Esau's uh, uh, um, witchcraft, you know, but it's still the will of the Lord, you know, because he, you know, these heathen, they, they worship these um, stars and these planets and things like that. But we know, you know, better. OK, uh, so it says. Um, Right. Just occasionally, the moon slips across a bright planet that will happen on June 19th when a 4% lit waning gibbous moon covers Venus in what is a relatively rare event. The moon will occult the morning star planet. So like I said, Esau is a big worshiper of uh, uh, um, Luciferianism. With the word Lucifer, it just means light bearer. It, it doesn't mean Satan, although Esau, being the devil that he is, and he and he has the power of Satan. He's the one in power. He has the uh, light of secrets, but he's being exposed. OK, and nevertheless, you know, they worship Venus and they worship these uh, demons and deities. So, uh, you know, another ritual could you know happen, you know. So it says what's particularly unusual about this event is that Venus will be an eight percent lit crescent. And the moon would be barely 4% lit with Venus disappearing behind the moon's bright limb and reappearing from behind its darkened limb. So, yeah, so he's, <laughs> he's going to be doing some heavy witchcraft, man. OK, um, but let's get this scripture about what it says about the morning star. 
you know. Um, son of the morning, okay. Was Isaiah fourteen? Yeah. So this is for you know the uh, elites of Esau, okay. Out there, you know, those of you that are into this witchcraft, the Lord says this. All right, thus say the Habashian was shy. Isaiah fourteen and twelve. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? So Esau, he's about to fall from his power. He's he he's fallen from his rulership. Okay. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nation? So Esau, he's about to get out of power, man. He's about to lose his rulership. He knows he has a short time, but at the end, we we know and understand that Yahweh Shai is going to save his people. Matter of fact, that's in the, the beginning of this chapter, Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined unto them, shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So the elect of Israel is, is going to be saved and Esau is going to fall from his power. So that's that's the light at the end of the tunnel of what we're seeing right now. OK. Um. So I'm going to finish this out. Uh, I mentioned Friday. All right. Saturday. Here we go. Saturday, June 20, 2020. The solstice. Uh, it says today is the June solstice, summer solstice in the northern hemisphere and winter solstice in the southern hemisphere. When the sun will reach its most northerly and highest point in the sky during 2020. OK, so is it's going to be a, well, let me read. It says it will happen at 1145 universal time. But how close is that to 1144? Because you can really say it it starts at 1144. And we know that that's a very spiritual number, 144. So something could happen Saturday. Okay. We just got to constantly, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, have faith and believe in how about you know, shy that he's working with us. He's working with us, man. It will happen in 1145 universal time, which you can translate to your local time here, though there's nothing in particular to see since solstice is a global event. So, yeah, the whole world can uh, see this. All right. You know, it's a global event. Sunday, June 21st, 2020, a solstice ring of fire eclipse. Something could very well happen, man, in the spirit, man. Big things could happen in the spirit. We just got to make sure that we're doing the right thing. So it says, remember, I told you about the moon being an epogee. Since it's further away from the earth than average, the moon seems a little smaller in the sky. That has a real effect today with that today is talking about Sunday. It says, because the new moon crosses the sun almost exactly as seen from some parts of the globe. You can't tell me how about you know, is it? isn't having these things happen man okay it causes a solar eclipse not a total solar eclipse but a special kind of partial solar eclipse called an annular solar eclipse that looks like a ring of fire around the moon the new moon will block 99.5 percent of the sun as seen from the congo democratic republic of congo south Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Yemen, Oman, Pakistan, India, Tibet, China, Taiwan, and Guam. All right, and, and the majority of that is Africa and the Middle East. So, for all, you know, and we know that in the Middle East, that's where uh, World War Three is going to kick off. So something could happen um, in those names. I mean, it's like in those um, uh, countries over there. And uh, Ethiopia is uh, specifically mentioned in um, the uh, uh, prophecy in uh, Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, you know, dealing with um, Gog and Magog, okay? So, you know, we could see something big. It says, lockdown and travel restrictions mean few international clip chasers will see it, but keep an eye online for some stunning images from astronomers that live in the past. So, you know, we're going to definitely have a, 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 a major, major spiritual week through the spirit and power of your high about me, I was shy. Um, let's just keep doing the right thing, keeping the faith. And I pray that this was edifying. I want to give our praises, our glory, and our honors. Until your how about me, I was shy, by Shimon Kakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone. Shalom.